Hello, I'm Simon Kennan, an interventional cardiologist and editor of Interventional Cardiology Review. I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Vinnie Bapat, who is a cardiac surgeon at St. Thomas's Hospital, and who's come to speak to us today about the Fortis transcatheter mitral valve prosthesis. Vinnie, thanks for coming along. Could you briefly describe the valve and the implantation procedure to us? Definitely. Uh, so we all are quite familiar with the TAVI valve design already. Uh, Fortis valve essentially can be looked upon as a modification of that. Mitral valve is a more complex structure, needs a bit more anchoring and it's much bigger in size. So the Fortis valve structure reflects that. Uh, it's a central part which is similar to the TAVI. Only thing is it's made of nitinol-based uh, design. It has got three leaflets, as in the TAVI valve. It has got a very flat atrial flange, which will sit in the base of the left atrium, and that allows to seal any paravalve leak. And then the most important is the fixing mechanism. So it has got two paddles, which are placed exactly opposite of each other, and they're supposed to grab the leaflets, anterior and posterior, to anchor the valve. So essentially, three components made of nitinol with three functioning leaflets. Okay. And it's a transapical procedure? At present, uh, as in many procedures, it is transapical. And the reason for that is the delivery system is reasonably large in size. It's around 40 French, which translates into around 12 millimeters yeah. to 13 millimeters. And uh, hence, the flexibility is not there in uh, delivering it. Okay. How many procedures have been done? and on what sort of patients? So the, the eight procedures done worldwide, uh, we did the first three at St. Thomas's Hospital in London. Uh, they are all been done on compassionate ground. Yeah. Um, regulatory permission, of course, internal as well as from MHRA was obtained. Similar pathway has been followed in Switzerland as well as in Canada for additional five patients. In all these patients, uh, essentially non-surgical patients who are turned down for surgical option as well as mitral clip and then they were investigated for the transcatheter valve. Okay. And the outcomes? Um, as expected, uh, being the first in the band, uh, the initial, not only the outcome, the procedure was challenging. Uh, as you know, to translate the animal data or the experiments in animal to take it to human is completely different. Um, the first patient did uh, extremely very well. However, his ejection fraction was 10 to 15 percent. He passed away at uh, day 77. A uh, second patient, we had a technical problem uh, in terms of partial leaflet capture. Um, and the third patient is alive at 208 days. His uh, six-minute walk has improved. His effort tolerance is getting better. And then the additional few patients which have been done elsewhere, uh, except one patient, uh, the patients are all alive. Okay, that's excellent. Um, in terms of hemodynamic data, valve area, valve gradient, uh, paravalvular leak. Could you give us an idea of how that's panning out? The, the way the Fortis valve design is, uh, the paravalvular leak issue is hardly there. Mm -hmm. uh, but if at all, what we have seen is some commissural leak, but that leak stops at the flange, so it's not a true paravalvular leak. Mm -hmm. um, again, as expected, it's a 29 millimeter valve, so a very big device. So the transvalvular gradients are hardly a four millimeter or less than that. So hemodynamically, it's a beautiful valve once it's implanted. Mm -hmm. um, again, the durability issue is of course always there, but this is, we are translating the same durability leaf, durable leaflets which have been used in surgical practice for the last 20 years. Yep. So we are expecting good hemodynamic results, fall in pulmonary artery pressures, which we have seen in majority patients and hopefully it recruits the LV and the LV function gets better as well. Okay, so plans for the future in terms of further procedures, uh, C marking, uh, and plans for future generation valves? Yeah. Um, so the first thing is uh, the future direction of where it is going. And so we'll continue to do compassionate cases if they are, if they are there. Uh, but more importantly, the trial protocol for limited feasibility study will be submitted to MHRA soon. Uh, it will take roughly 90 days to 120 days for approval. Uh, before that, uh, simultaneously, the protocol has been approved in Germany and Canada. So they have already enrolled one patient in feasibility study. This is a limited feasibility study to demonstrate that it is possible. Once the limited feasibility study, which will hopefully be 30 patients, then the question will be CMR. 
On device modification, we have already learned that there are some challenges which are pretty unique. One of them is, of course, imaging. It's very eco-dependent. Mm-hmm. Uh, hence, there are some modifications being done to the delivery system as well as device, uh, which will complement what we're doing today with, to make the procedure easier. So smaller French size? Smaller French size, maybe the way the device is, uh, there's modification so that you can crimp it down. Um, the way imaging has to change a lot uh, because we are used to doing TAVIs under fluoroscopy. Yeah. But here, you, the, you can't see anything under fluoroscopy. You see everything only under echo. Mm-hmm. So something like intracardiac echo, whether it's useful or not, or different views, uh, different, uh, so to speak, landmarks during the case, which you can confirm in a different fashion. Uh, that's where I think the initial advancement will happen for the 30, case, 30 patients. Once that is rock solid, see mark trials will start. I think it will be too early otherwise. Okay. Vinny, thanks for coming along. Good Thank luck with the Fortis valve. Thank you.